Hello, I'm the Media Wiz, because when art form wasn't enough. Let's talk about rappers and how they like to branch out into other mediums. Now, previously to this, I've looked at films featuring Ice Cube, most of which were bad, though there was the occasional gem here and there. And despite Ice Cube not being a great actor, he's still one of the better rappers turned actors out there. And of course, there was the Slim Shady Show, which was just plain awful. Terrible animation, terrible voice acting, terrible comedy terrible attempts at writing, just terrible all around. But like other forms of mixed media meant to tie into popular things, musicians of all kinds, rappers included, have wanted to test the waters throughout the course of their careers. Whether it be movies featuring Snoop Dogg, Ludacris, or even the Insane Clown Posse, video games featuring 50 Cent, Def Jam Records, the Black Eyed Peas, and the Wu-Tang Clan, and of course cartoons featuring the likes of Ice Cube, Eminem, or... Soldier Boy. Yes, this actually happened, if you somehow didn't know about this. There was a Soldier Boy cartoon. Granted, it was only one episode long, and it was a web series, but my point still stands. And if you're curious, there's also a Soldier Boy documentary, and of course there was his little video game console controversy from years back, but the less said about that puke stain, the better. No, oh, no. Instead, we're going to be talking about one of the biggest pop rappers of the early 90s. That being MC Hammer. This man made a name for himself because of his catchy hooks, silly clothes, and killer dance moves. Since I didn't live through the 90s, I'm going mostly off of research and watching these old interviews and stuff, but this man was huge back in the day. But just because he was popular didn't mean he was always respected. Because of the rise of gangster rap in the early 90s, most other rappers were quick to call him out as a pop sellout. Not to mention, he eventually went bankrupt after a lot of bad spending habits. And let's not even get started on his attempt at becoming a gangster rapper with that funky Headhunter album. But besides that, when this man was in his prime, he was one of the celebrities that was just so popular you could slap his likeness onto anything and everything and companies thought people would eat it up. Aside from his songs and his live performances, this man had his own Tiger handheld electronics game, appearances in comic books, action figures, commercials for various different fast food chains, and of course, a Saturday morning cartoon show called Hammer Man. From what I could find about this show, it was released at the height of Hammer's fame in 1991. It was aired on ABC for a 13 episode season from September to December of that year. And if you want to blame anyone for putting this thing together, look no further than good old Deke Entertainment, the same company that gave shelf space to a lot of popular cartoons from back in the day, like Super Mario Bros. Super Show, Sonic Sat AM, and Inspector Gadget, just to name a few. And if you've been watching my reviews for a while now, you'll also know that they're responsible for Captain M the Game Master and that Battletoads pilot. And speaking of which, that Battletoads pilot was released just a year after this show was made. How do you turn MC Hammer into a Saturday morning cartoon superhero? I don't know, same way you turn Michael Jackson into a Sega Genesis game, I guess? Whatever. This is Hammer Man. Let's start with the amazingly bad theme song. Good luck getting that one out of your heads. And by the way, this is another one of those shows where instead of dedicating a first episode to show how the show's general plot will unravel and lead into the series proper, they just wrap it all up in the opening theme song. So what exactly does turn MC Hammer into a superhero? Well, get a load of this. There was once a superhero called Soul Man whose powers were brought out by these living magical shoes. As he got older, he eventually hung up the heroics, but soon found a new hero in youth center worker Stanley. He gave him the shoes, and of course, since Stanley is a self insert for MC Hammer, his superhero persona is Hammer Man. Everybody got that? With all that out of the way, let's actually start with the first episode Defeated Graffiti. Now, we're not going to tell everybody who we got it, but we got a show for you. So check Why this not? out. Anybody like graffiti? No. no. Why not? It ruins it. Yeah. Because it's most really people bad. put it where they're not supposed to. Now, it can be good, but it's not right when you put it on other people's property. Yeah, that's another thing. This is one of those shows that has live-action prologues and epilogues where they go over the lesson of each episode. And, yeah, I get it. This was the early 90s and everything, but even for back then, this is some really shoddy green screen work. 
And for better or for worse, these are actually the only times MC Hammer is here. He does the theme song, the prologues, and the epilogues, but not the main vocals for his cartoon counterpart. No, no. Stanley slash Hammerman is voiced by Clark Johnson, who's voiced in a few things you might recognize, and seems to mostly be known for his directing work. My only guess as to why Hammer didn't provide his own voice is because he was probably busy, and the studio didn't want to give him enough money to have him stay and do the whole series. Oh, seriously, the backgrounds we're going to have to look at this entire show? God, and to think, I railed on the Battletoads pilot for having bad backgrounds. Well, alright, maybe we can look past it if the animation on the characters is actually good, right? Not bad, Ludwig. Oh my god, the animation on the characters is even worse. And it's like this throughout the entire show. Characters just jostle around at a few frames per second, and the mouth movements seem to only be one of two different frames. This is like Madball's gross jokes levels of incompetent. Alright, so the plot begins with a local library catching on fire, and the city's fire department is so ineffectual, leave it to the guy in parachute pants to come save this librarian from a burning building. And yeah, I know, we've all joked about Superman's glasses not being a good enough disguise throughout the years, but yeah, no, I'm sorry. This is not a super suit, my guy. Put the librarian problem into effect mode. Get with the program, pal, so I can finish the show. After Hammerman runs off and transitions back into Stanley, we then see the youth center that Stanley works at where Gramps' granddaughter Jody is trying to paint a picture, but it's ruined because of some faulty plumbing pipes that burst and begin to flood the room, which for some reason doesn't seem to spill out into the next room when a character opens a door. Wow, haven't seen physics broken that bad since Home Alone 4. Good going, Hammerman. Yo, yo, is Stanley around? I gotta see Stanley. Showbiz! Too busy, kiddo. Got big stuff going. Big, big stuff! Let me tell you, Stanley, my manly. Tuba! But, but, it's the wave of your future! Of course, it wouldn't be a lame Saturday morning cartoon from the 90s if there wasn't some obnoxious comic relief characters. I gotta help Winnie fix the prize. They don't even know I'm here. Jody, what's wrong? Trouble on the way. Don't today. Oh, yeah. I hope you're ready to see these characters more often because it seems like they pop up every scene transition. We need the, the hammer. Ooh, look. Doesn't look good. No, no, no. Uh -uh. No one can stop him. Old Town's money is his. Stanley's in trouble. That ain't no lie. Got to water down that fire guy. Clearly, they were so integral to the story. Absolutely. The, the, the show would just be lost without them. Hey, Joker. Wait, what? Hey, Joker. That kid seriously named Joker? Hey, Joker. There's only one possible explanation. That kid's parents were diehard Batman fans, and they wanted their kid to someday grow up telling the world that we, in fact, live in a society. Anyway, the kids are being watched by the villain for the episode. This guy dressed in... I, I, I don't know, what was that, like a witch costume or something? Called Defacely Marmeister. His evil plans are to get kids spray painting all over the city with these special tampered with spray cans that contain a chemical that brings the paintings to life, as they will then rob banks and bring him the money. Back with Stanley and Gramps. Sorry, Gramps. I don't know where Jody is. Last I saw, she was leaving here looking all upset. What about? Not sure. I was up to my knees in the plumbing. Are Stanley and that lady we saw earlier the only people that work at this youth center? Like, there's no janitors or anything that could fix the plumbing? Or some kind of plumbing company in the city that could come and fix this problem without having to use a freaking tuba? Of course, because of her childlike innocence, Jody is convinced by Marmeister and starts spray painting on buildings and his plans begin to unfurl. After Gramps tells him that he can't find Jody, Stanley decides to suit up as Hammerman and go look for her. Are we ever gonna get in the action? I'm so bored. Oh, just chill. Uh, got any aces? You got any? Hey, cut it out! Cut what out? You were looking at my cards. What's not? With two? Not two. Oh, where is Christopher Lloyd with a vat of dip when you need him? 
Oh, if only. After some bad comedic banter between these two over a sandwich, trust me, it goes nowhere and it's not that funny, Stanley finally sees Marmeister unleashing his evil spray paint monsters onto the city, and he ends up getting captured by the villain. Let's see how you like Dr. Lackey's remix of my Marmeister's malicious multicolored mayhem making paint potion. Hey, 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 what, what are you doing to me here? Those vicious, heartless bastards, they're putting him through the casting process of white chicks. After all the spray paintings come to life and turn into a bunch of preschool kids' fridge drawings, Jody and Gramps show up and save Stanley from the monster by throwing water onto him. No wonder you were singing flat. Hmm, remix spray. It's sad when you have to recycle plot elements from a freaking Pepsi commercial for your show. MC Hammer, rap star and Pepsi drinker. Well, today, we secretly replaced his Pepsi with Coke. Let's see what happens. Feelings. So now that Stanley is free and rushes back to get his magic shoes, he turns into Hammer Man and defeats them through the power of a breakout single. Oh yeah, nice reused animation of the crowd from the beginning of the episode. That's not lazy or anything. But it's not over yet, as Marmeister tries to kidnap Jody. But she manages to get out of his grasp by using the paint to make a sentient police officer who apprehends Marmeister. This graffiti caper of yours is gonna draw you a long sentence. Curses! Drats! All I can say is, I was framed! <laughs> so Jody gets to show off her artistic talent, and we end with Gramps and Stanley walking off into the night, congratulating themselves for a job well done. And if you stay before the credits, we get a green-screened MC Hammer epilogue. So next time you feel like doing a little artwork, do it on some paper, not on somebody else's property. It'll keep you out of a whole lot of trouble. And who knows, you might end up drawing on a cartoon like Hammerman one day. Well, that's an insult if I ever heard one. <laughs> anyway, that was Hammerman, and that was utter crap, but it was entertainingly hilarious crap. Not only with this episode, but with the other episodes that I could find, the animation is choppy, the voice acting isn't anything great, the inclusion of MC Hammer's actual music just feels forced, the lessons are clearly well-intentioned, but just come off as shabby, like a lot of other message shows from around that time. And let's be honest, the only reason that this exists is because some studio heads wanted to make a quick buck off of MC Hammer's at-the-time success. All that said, the animation, voice acting, and writing is so ineptly put together, I'd actually recommend people watch this just to riff and make fun of it. In a way, it's like the Boom Crew, which came out years later. Both are horribly dated, have sloppy animation, moronic characters, and lame attempts at being hip, but are still bad enough to get some solid laughs out of. An interesting bit of note here is that despite 13 episodes initially being aired, it seems like some of them are missing, unlisted, or only partially found. It probably doesn't help that the show was never given an official DVD or streaming release. Closest thing to that was three episodes were put onto VHS, meaning yes, even the 2011 Wonder Woman pilot has one step above Hammerman in that it has a DVD release. It's a bootleg, but still. I mean, come on. How far does this kind of thing go? Well, what's next? Is there some kind of cartoon where Shaq and all of his basketball buddies are going around solving mysteries with a talking dog or something? Hey, that doesn't count. That was a Mad TV sketch that was parodying dumb cartoon tie-ins like this. Anyway, next time on The Media Wiz, we're going to be looking at a dumb, shortly-lived sitcom that was trying to ape off of one of the biggest comedies of the late 80s. Until then, I'm The Media Wiz, because one art form wasn't enough.
Ow! Not bad, Stanley. You just gotta put a little more Ow! in your Ow! 